There's no skunk going on. I did not get skunk. <laughs> I literally cast out in the middle out here. It's the smallest bass in this entire lake. Man, I worked hard for this fish. But I got one! <laughs> Tough bite today. There was a tournament on the weekend. The lake's still all beat up. All my spots, not a bite. I made too many videos here. There's a storm coming. They don't eat before a storm. It just stormed. They don't eat after a storm. That's why they call it fishing, not catching. God, I hate that. What does that even mean? They're just not eating. <sighs> <laughs> we can have all the excuses in the book and we can point fingers in any direction we want. But that's exactly why this is a sport because every day can present new challenges. And in this day and age, things are even tougher. With new technology, more popularity, and more educated anglers, thanks YouTube, our lakes and waterways are getting more pressure than they ever have before. So today, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna give you my top three places to find fish where no one else is looking. It's where to find fish on a pressured lake, today on Captain's Corner. There's a good reason why stereotypes are formed. It's because 90% of the time, that's the truth. And the same goes for finding fish. 90% of the time, those fish are gonna be found in those typical obvious areas, the hot spots. Those typical areas that we all flock to and generally find success at. Cover, structure, points, ledges, drop-offs, etc. So naturally, those should always be the areas that you target first. But when you're having one of those days where you just can't seem to buy a bite, it may be time to start thinking a little bit differently. Most anglers are just gonna keep pounding those same spots, trying lure after lure, until they eventually give up and go home with one of those excuses. But today, I'm gonna go over my top spots that most anglers never look at that could very well be your ticket to success on those high pressure days. Number one, seawalls. That's right, seawalls. Seawalls may not look like much, there's not generally a lot going on there. There's not usually a lot of vegetation, not much in the way of contours or other structure for bass to hide in, and not often is there even shaded areas that you would target. Seawalls are definitely not your typical obvious hot spots. But seawalls can actually be incredible gold mines that hold active bass. And here's why, number one, you have to consider why the seawall was built there in the first place. That seawall was built there to hold that shoreline in place. That means that that area of shoreline is generally gonna be made up of soft earth, like soil or sand, which is prime location for bait fish to find food and even breeding grounds. It also means that that area of shoreline must receive a good amount of lake effect and or current, elements that threaten that shoreline. That constant commotion of waves and current creates turmoil up against that seawall. That turmoil actually creates a fair amount of oxygen rich water. And that can make an extraordinary difference when the water is really hot. Hot water depletes itself of oxygen. So an area that has a lot more oxygen and flowing water is a natural magnet for bass. But the main reason I turn to seawalls is the same reason that active bass are there in the first place. Aggressive feeding bass will use the seawall like a tool to help them catch their meal. Those bass will actually corral those bait fish that were already attracted to that area up against that seawall. They'll push them up against that seawall using it like a trap, essentially trapping them in open water, making them an easy target and an easy meal. And that is just a gold mine that most anglers are gonna pass right by. If there's bass there, they are active and feeding. They're there to eat. That sure sounds like a pressured lake problem solved to me. Whoa, whoa, get over there. That was something huge chasing something on the wall there. Yeah, that was something, something big chased along the wall, whatever it was chasing. Whoa. 
There you go. Oh, that was a big fish, dude. Yeah. See that weight come after it? Yeah. I bet that's what I saw. But he didn't get the hook, so. He at least thought it wasn't real. Dude, another wake. No way. Look at that wake. Look at the yeah. size of that wake. <gasps> got, him. got him. Got him. Yeah, look at him. That's a good one. Keep him down. Dude, good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, there's, geez, there's five giants chasing him, dude. This is a big fish, dude. There isn't even bigger fish following him, too. Oh, my God. I barely got him hooked, dude. He barely got him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a huge fish. You get him? Yes. That's at least a five. <laughs> so it. You did it again, man. Every time, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Look at that. That is just insane. There's a whole school of these giants here. That was insane. There was like four or five of them at least. At least as big as him. Following him. Whoo! <laughs> Guys, can you freaking believe it? Struggling all day really. And then we just, just nail it. Just a flipping giant here. And there was a whole school of these guys there. So I hope that we can go back and get some more. So next time you're out on the water and you're finding yourself in one of those high pressured moments where you're really struggling to get that bite, Look for a seawall. That might just be the ticket that you need to turn that day around. Number two, 20 yards behind you. I know that might sound a little funny, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Seriously though, when that bite on those typical holding areas just isn't there, turn around. Everyone else is going to be facing forward, hammering away at those typical targets. They're going to be 10 yards just in front of that weed line those lily pad patches, the shoreline structure, the overhanging bushes, the sawgrass, the bull whips, firing lure after lure right at and into all those obvious targets. That's what we're all conditioned to do. Seek out the obvious targets and pick it apart until you find success. And yeah, most days that's gonna work out great for you. But on those days when those bass are really feeling the pressure in those spots, there's a good chance they haven't gone too far. Instead of facing that cover, turn around and fish the open water outside of it. Most likely, you're gonna find areas outside of that cover in the open water that hold fish on submerged cover and structure. Things like weeds that quite haven't grown up to the surface yet, rock piles, oyster beds, brush piles, sunken trees. There's all sorts of little things that could hold those bass that are really weary about going back up into that obvious target because of the pressure they've been receiving. Oh, oh this is a big fish. This is a good fish. Oh my God, it's a giant. Oh my god. You want the net? Yeah. Dude, that's a big fish. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, son! Oh. He's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up. Oh my god, Ted. Oh, that is a... oh. This is a huge fish. Huge fish, guys. Huge fish. Yeah! Oh my god, that is a pig. That's gotta be a six? Seven? It's like a six. Six and a half? Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at this hog. Oh. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> wow. That is a heavy fish. At least a six. <sighs> Open water outside of obvious targets. When the bite is really tough on the obvious targets that you're facing at, turn around and try fishing 20 yards behind you. The open water could be where those bass are hiding in plain sight. And number three, right back at the beginning, right back where you started, at the boat ramp and the area surrounding it. This one always made me wonder why, and I'm no different than any of you. We study our maps, our charts, our graphs. We spend hours scouting out areas on lakes that we think would be prime areas. We load up our boats, we launch the boat, fire up the engine, and haul butt all the way across the lake 
to those spots that we figured would be the best areas to target. Never paying much mind to where we just started. And I can almost guarantee we've all thought of this at one point or another. And we probably even commented on it as we're coming out of the boat ramp. Man, it sure looks fishy here. But yet, we rarely ever stop and check it out. And that right there is a good enough reason on those high pressure days, those struggling days, why you should go right back to the boat ramp and try that area. Because no one ever does. But the greatest reason is actually very simple. Especially on the bigger lakes and bodies of water. The ones that hold tournaments often. Big lakes, big water that host lots of tournaments also hold lots of bass. And aside from the new Major League Fishing format, all other tournaments have weigh-ins back at the boat ramp or that area. All those anglers fly all over that body of water collecting the biggest and best bass that they can catch. And they stuff them all in their live well and they haul them all right back to the boat ramp. Where do you suppose all those bass get released? Yeah, that's right, the boat ramp. Now, many of those bass are gonna venture forth and slowly make their way back to their prime locations, to their hunting grounds, to wherever they called home previously. But plenty of those bass are gonna stop at the fishy looking areas you noted earlier. They're gonna stop and feed up and gather up their strength so they can venture forth back to wherever they came from. Sometimes they never leave. Now you got a spot that's loaded with the biggest and best bass tournament anglers could catch and find right where you started. And 90% of us go right on by. Hey guys, got a jig. Oh. He swore, swiped at it twice. Did you see him go again? He wants it. Oh, got him! Yeah, buddy! <laughs> Woo! Oh, he's strong, man. <laughs> That's a strong fish. Check it out. And on that new Royal Legend Elite Reel, throwing a little hair jig. A beautiful fish. Yes, yeah! Fat! Look is a though. thing of beauty. That's why we kept missing him. He's <laughs> missing part of his lip. That's why we kept missing him. No, no wonder. <laughs> awesome. All that little hair jig finally, finally got it. <sighs> that is a thing of beauty right there. Great job. Look at that. On the Royal Legend Elite. Yeah, bro. You said you wanted to catch him on that. I did, man. You did. Got what a gorgeous fish. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, awesome. All on video. Cast to catch, baby. Yeah, <sighs> Let's let him go. Thank you, my friend. Woo! That was killer. <laughs> so yeah, when you're out there and you're struggling and you can't find that bite, go right back to where you started. Go back to the boat ramp. Chances are, you're the only one fishing it. You know, there's an old saying that goes, 90% of the fish can be found in 10% of the water but that could very well also mean that 90% of the anglers are there too. So when that's the case, and your body water is feeling all that pressure, be a 10 percenter and turn to the areas where nobody else is looking. So there you have it guys, my top three spots to find fish where nobody else is looking on a pressured body of water. Well folks, I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see me film out here. I'll do my very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming in Sawgrass Bassin's future. One last time from beautiful North Florida, I'm Captain Mikey signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.